Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Kenyatta Joseph, and I have the esteemed honor of serving as the Women's Ministries Leader here at New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am so happy that you are joining us for worship this Sabbath, which is none other than our annual Women's Day. If you are not familiar with our church, you might ask, what is Women's Day? Women's Day is an opportunity to engage in a worship experience that is uniquely targeted and designed to focus on the spiritual and emotional needs and concerns of women. Our theme for this year is For Such a Time as This. This theme was Holy Spirit inspired out of the realization of how circumstances that are happening around the world today are really impacting women. Women are the backbone of the family and often the pillar of their community. We at times bear a great burden while the world at large expects us to maintain our smile. 2020 has been a year unlike any other in our lifetime. We as women have been pulled and pushed in more ways than we can imagine. We have been quarantined as a result of a worldwide pandemic, we stood witness to our black and brown brothers and sisters being killed and treated unjustly by the police and had the Dow stock market plunge. We are currently experiencing the concerns around the upcoming presidential election and on a more personal note, the deaths and sicknesses of family and friends. But 2020 has not been all bad. There have been weddings and babies born, new jobs to celebrate, the pandemic has even led to an increase in family time, granted opportunities for personal reflection, and some have launched businesses that were only previously dreams. Some women have been comforted and have grown, while others of us have been stretched to near breaking. Despite these countless stressors, and because of these celebrations, we have grown. We are being shaped and developed by our experiences. And I want you to remember that you were created for such a time as this. Gentlemen, please do not think that we forgot about you. We have a power pack service in store for everyone and you will surely be blessed. Ladies, I celebrate you. Each of you are queens in your own right. And if you have taken it off for any reason, Go grab your crown and hold your head up high because today is your day. We even have a gift just for you to celebrate your greatness. If you have not had an opportunity, please register at the link on your screen and come by today between 1 and 3 p.m. to pick it up. Again, thank you so much for joining us and I pray that you are blessed abundantly. Is for such a time as this still relevant in life today? Let me ask you, is God calling you to expose one of Haman's plots? Has the Holy Spirit burdened you to confront some form of injustice? Esther was a seemingly insignificant young woman with no pedigree and no funding, and her racial background made her an outcast. Yet, because of God's favor on her life, she was elevated into position to change history. Even with the odds stacked against us, God's plan will always prevail. Though few of us will ever be in such a position as Esther's, each believer has an essential role to play in the ongoing plan of God. We can trust him as we live out our, for such a time as this, each moment of each day where we are, because he works all things together to fulfill his purpose. Our scripture today is found in Deuteronomy 31.8. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful that you have prepared us for your plan in our lives. Show us how we can serve you right where we are. Help us to be faithful to you in every way. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, family. This is the part in the service where you can participate. There's a passage in Patriarch and Prophets that reads, the system of tithe and offerings was intended to impress the mind of men with a great truth, that God is the source of every blessing to his creature, and that to him, man's gratitude is due for the good gifts of his providence. God is the source of every blessing and he wants us to trust him. Not once in the Bible does it say, worry about it, stress about it, figure it out on your own. Over and over the word clearly says to trust God. And there's no other relationship where you can give so little and the guarantee is I will return unto you so much that you won't have room enough to receive it. Prove him now, trust God. Let us pray. Father, we come to you with thankful hearts. Lord, you are our source and you take such good care of us. We're grateful for another Sabbath. Help us to be faithful in what you've given us and to return tithe and offering with a grateful heart. We wanna trust you and we wanna be saved in your kingdom when you return. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We thought of you today, but that is nothing new. We thought about you yesterday and the days before that too. We think of you in silence. We also speak your name. Now all we have are memories and your pictures in a frame. Your memory is a keepsake with which we'll never part. Although you are now sleeping, we have you in our heart. We pause at this point in our service to pay tribute to the beautiful ladies who are faithful members of our congregation. We are so thankful for the time that we had to spend with you and we honor your memory. We would also like to recognize the members of our church family that have lost family members and friends this year. Please pause for a moment of silent meditation and remember them in your own special way. Good morning, brethren and friends, and good morning, everybody, on the TV, on the Facebook, on the church website, just saying good morning to you all. As we gather here today to praise and worship God on Women's Day, we just want to say thank you, God, for all you have done for us. Let us pray. Our Father and our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. We are indeed so grateful to you for your love, your mercy, and for your keeping watch, care, and protection over us, your children. We pray, God, that as we come to worship you today, we will worship you in spirit and in truth. We invite that Holy Spirit presence to be with us. Dear Father, we could have been dead and gone, but you gave us another chance where we can worship and adore thee. 
Although we are not all together in church, but wherever we are in our homes or wherever we are watching this program today, dear God, on Women's Day, we pray that thou will tabernacle with us. Help, dear Lord, that as we listen to thy words, we will be soberly blessed and sanctified and purified with the words that shall come to us from the servant of God who will proclaim thy word today. Dear Lord, we pray that thou will be with the sick ones among us. Lord, we need thee now more than ever. Thou art the greatest physician man has ever heard about. And we pray, Lord, that thou will touch and heal thy people wherever they are according to your will. Dear Father, we thank you for this another day. We thank you for the sisters who have put this Women's Day program together. We thank thee for this, the speaker that will speak to us today, dear Lord. Bless her abundantly. And may the words she, she speak today will not go back without bearing fruit, but may somebody say yes to thee who have not yet said yes to thee. May somebody make a decision today to get off the fence and to give their lives to thee. Dear Father, we thank you for the leaders of our church, our pastor, our pastor, Pastor Levy, and our elders and all the other department heads in the church. We pray for all our members, dear God. Have mercy upon us, Father. And Lord, when this day shall come to its end, to its end, may somebody say yes to thee before it is too late. We know your coming is at hand, and we do not want anybody to be lost. We want us all to be saved in thy kingdom. Hear us, O God, we pray. Answer a prayer, dear Lord, according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Janelle Monroe is a Maryland native who proudly represents both her African and Jamaican backgrounds. It was at the age of 14 that she accepted the call to ministry and began to pursue God's call over her life. As a result, she now holds a Bachelor's of Arts in Theology from Andrews University, from which she graduated in May 2017. This past May, she graduated with her Master's of Divinity, obtained from the Andrews Theological Seminary. She served for three years as the Administrative Pastor of New Life Fellowship located on the campus of Andrews University. Due to a period of transition, she had the honor to serve as the interim lead pastor of the New Life Fellowship during the fall and spring semesters. This time served as very fruitful, seeing as she was able to grow in her knowledge of tangible and practical pastoral ministry that is effective for ministering to urban young adults between the ages of 18 through 25. From the time she accepted Christ until now, she has sought to unleash the Holy Spirit in the lives of others in any capacity possible. From preaching on youth days, Pathfinder Sabbaths, chapels and divine services for churches all over the nation, to preaching, teaching, and leading on the campus of Andrews University, she has sought to empower and equip as many youth and young adults to build the communities around them in preparation for the kingdom to come. In addition to ministering through the word, Janelle also enjoys ministering through music, whether that be through singing or composing her own music. Not only is Janelle passionate about preaching the word, but she is also passionate about living the word by seeking that equality and justice is achieved for all. Janelle is known as an advocate for social justice, having served as president over one of Andrews University's most prominent clubs, the Black Student Christian Forum. She also has advocated for social justice by contributing to multiple platforms, some being It Is Time AU and I Am Here movements that seek to bring power and awareness of the challenges faced by people of color and woman in ministry. It is time AU is known for bringing about effective changes 
such as the development of a vice president of diversity and inclusion position to guarantee the equal representation and care of all students on the campus of Andrews University, especially those of minority groups. Above all, Janelle loves God, her family and friends and people at large and will seek and endeavors to come to continually fulfill her passion to serve, empower and equip the underserved of her community by sharing the gospel in its purest form to meet the holistic needs of humanity. After special music, you'll hear from the dynamic Janelle Monroe.
and even more so for this woman's day. And I would just like to publicly acknowledge and affirm your woman's ministry leader, Sister Kenyetta Joseph, because she has put in so much work, y'all. And she has led such a committed team who has worked so hard for this day to be what it is. So if you could just simply do me a favor and do the woman's ministries team a favor, could you just write down below in the comment section a thank you to your women's ministries team because they have worked so hard to put together such an excellent day and they've been planning for weeks so if you could just simply affirm them in their hard work by just writing down and saying thank you because although it may look easy by no means is it actually easy to put together such big days like this one especially on a virtual platform so I believe that whenever you have the opportunity to affirm those putting in the hard work, I believe that it is in good order to do so. And last but not least, a special thank you to your shepherd and your pastor, Pastor Levy, for extending this invitation to be with you all here on today. And because I am not one for wasting time, we're just going to head straight into the word if that is all right with you. And today's text will be coming from the book of Numbers and will be in chapter 27. And once again, we'll be in the book of Numbers. You can find that in the Old Testament and will be in chapter 27. And you see, today, I want to talk to you about a story that you have probably never heard before, that no matter how many Sabbath school lessons you've read, how many Bible studies you've been to. This is probably a story that has never crossed your eyes or your ears. And you see, this is a story that speaks to our times now more than ever before to empower and encourage the women on whose backs organizations and movements are often built. Yet rarely are these women given the attribution and credibility for the crucial parts that they may play in our day to day that this is a story that speaks to the woman who is no longer waiting for a seat to be made for her at the table, but you are saying that you are ready to bring your own chair. That this is a story that speaks to the woman who has held it down for those around her, even when no one was holding it down for her. Y'all, today, I wanna talk to you about Salofahad's daughters. And when you've reached Numbers 27, let me know and let your house know by either typing in the comments or saying out loud, word. For I do believe that there is a word from the Lord for us here on today. 
And once you're there, I will begin reading. And it says the New International Version reads at verse one, the daughters of Zelophehad, son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, belong to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah. And they came forward and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting and said, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own son, sin and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no son? Give us property among our father's relatives. So Moses brought their case before the Lord. And the Lord said to him, and we'll be ending at verse seven, what Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and give their father's inheritance to them. Today, I want to speak to you under the theme, for such a time as this, your voice matters. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to say thank you so much, God, for today. And thank you so much for how you have moved so powerfully and for how you will continue to move powerfully even through this word. So right now, O oh Lord, as I am praying, I am asking, O oh God, that you would use me to preach so that the spirit would be unleashed and chains would be broken in this place. Even now, would you have your way and would you comfort, would you strengthen and would you encourage the people who are listening to hear a word from you on today? God, thank you in advance. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen and amen. So growing up, you know, every Sabbath morning, my mother would get my siblings and I ready for church. And you see, it didn't matter how tired she was. And it certainly didn't matter how tired we were. Because every single Saturday, my mother would get my siblings and I ready, making sure that our clothes were pressed and not a wrinkle could be found. She wanted to make sure that we looked like we actually had pride in ourselves, as most Jamaican women would refer to it as. And she would make sure that my hair was always done well with the cutest hairstyles, the puffiest little bubbles that you could put in your hair, with the frilliest dresses and the cutest shiny shoes with the uncomfortable stockings to match. It didn't matter if it was raining cats and dogs outside, and it certainly didn't matter if there was snow on the ground. And you know in Maryland, at just the mention of snow, no one wants to go anywhere. But nevertheless, my mother would pack my siblings and I and whichever family members she could pick up in her suburban and she would drive us to church. Now, my mother was committed to us going to Sabbath school, even if it meant dropping us off at church and then picking up whoever was calling her and asking for a ride, whether it was auntie so-and-so, cousin so-and-so or church member so-and-so. My mother made sure every week that we got as much of Sabbath school as we could get. And I ain't gonna hold you. Sabbath school was fun. And when I say Sabbath school, I am referring to children's Sabbath school. Because this was where we not only learned things, but this is where we got snacks that could hold us over until after church. This is where we got to draw things. We got to do plays. We got to sing. I enjoyed Sabbath school because Sabbath school was fun. And Sabbath school was where I learned of people like Moses, through whom God delivered a whole nation of oppressed people from slavery, promising them a new land in which they wouldn't have to fear being mistreated or being uncared for. I learned of a God who gave the Ten Commandments solidifying how humanity was to treat God and for how humanity was to treat one another. I learned of a people who pleaded for food and to their cry, God provided manna from the sky, demonstrating that God would seek to provide for the needs of not just a few, but of everyone. But never did I learn 
of Zelophehad's daughters and of a God whose very being encapsulates the fair and equal treatment of all, a God of justice. And today, I wanna ask you, have you ever heard of Zelophehad's daughters? And have you heard of their misfortune and the loss of their father making them fatherless? Have you heard of how their patriarchal structure resulted in their being poor and destitute? Have you heard of how when the time came to gain their father's inheritance, they were overlooked and forgotten? And have you heard of how though they were overlooked, they advocated for themselves to be treated fairly, resulting in others like them being treated fairly as well. Have you heard of Zelophehad's daughters? For verses one and two say that Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah had come before Moses. They had come before Eliot. Eleazar the priest, they'd come before the leaders and the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And you see, this is where we must pause and ask, why did the author incorporate the tent of meeting? Why was it important for us to know the name of the place where they met? And I would like to prescribe that the reason for the author incorporating the naming of the place where they met is because in Exodus 33, we find that Moses creates the tent of meeting to serve as a space where people could come and inquire of the Lord. That the entrance to the tent of meeting was where people could bring their requests and expect a response from the Lord. That to come before the entrance to the tent of meeting was to go expecting a word and leaving having received a word. And you see, I believe that we too can relate because even now as you are watching, you have come hoping that the Lord would give you a word to keep you going, even if just for one more week. That your kids have been driving you mad with doing Zoom on school and you've just about had enough. You need a word to keep you going. That your health has been acting all kinds of crazy and it has had you concerned to no end and doctors can't even explain what it is. You need a word to keep you going. That every time you turn on the news, just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, you keep hearing of new foolery done by this president. You need a word to keep you going. You see, the entrance to the tent of meeting was where people knew that they were going to be heard by God and to receive a word from God. And upon reading Numbers 27, it could be assumed that these sisters also were coming because they were expecting to plead their case and receive a word from God. But what we find here is that these sisters did not come to this tent to receive a word. They came to give a word. That these sisters were not coming to inquire of Moses and the leaders. They were coming to hold Moses and the leaders accountable before the presence of God. You see, we find in verse four that these sisters came to give a word concerning the inheritance of their land. For verse four says that they questioned, why should our father's name disappear from his clan? Because he had no son. Give us property among our father's relatives. These women were not coming to ask about their land. The Hebrew says that they were coming to claim their land. Because what Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirza knew was that although others were willing to let them slip through the cracks, they were not willing to let themselves slip through the cracks. And I need to say this again for the person with the struggling Wi-Fi who may not have caught all of that because this was needed, this is needed to be known, that although others were willing to let them slip through the cracks, these sisters were not willing to let themselves slip through the cracks. And we find that this problem had occurred as a result of a census that had been done. And the census, the census was used to determine the portions of land that were to be given to each son that had completed the census. But the issue here is that their father, Zelophehad, had no sons, meaning that after his passing, his inheritance was left unclaimed. 
And if an inheritance was left unclaimed, then land wasn't dis distributed in his name, leaving his name without honor, as mentioned in verse four, and leaving his daughters potentially homeless. Because in a patriarchal society, land was only passed down to sons. Daughters were expected to marry and to become financially dependent upon their husbands. Or if they were unmarried, they were to remain with their brother and his household, allowing for him to take care of her. And this is where we find tension in this text. Because it is not only that Zelophehad's daughters are fatherless, but it is that they are fatherless and unmarried meaning that they had not a dime to their name. Now, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the assembly as a whole? And I'm glad you asked the question, because we find in Exodus 22, verses 14, that the Israelites are told to care for the widowed, the fatherless, and the orphaned. However, when the opportunity had come for Moses and the leaders to demonstrate the care and provision for the fatherless daughters of Zelophehad, they failed to do so. And the daughters of Zelophehad were overlooked and forgotten by the very people who were to lead out in the demonstration of the principles of God. But although the leaders had overlooked them, these sisters didn't overlook themselves. That although their needs were neglected by their leaders, they refused to neglect their needs themselves. That although no one spoke up for them, they decided to speak up for themselves. And today, God has sent me here to tell somebody that it is time for you to advocate and to speak up for yourself. Because you have sat by silently and endured the treatment that has been given to you, whether by your job, your government, your family, your friends, and your church. You have allowed for yourself to cater to the needs of everybody else but your own. You have extended the grace and patience to everybody else, but neglected to extend it to yourself. And now more than ever, God is saying to you today that enough is enough. And God wants you to speak up. That in the same way the daughters of Zelophehad had went before the leaders of their community and made their voices heard in order that their livelihood may have been preserved, God is calling for you to speak up on behalf of yourself. Because for too long, you have struggled with life's problems all alone because you were taught that to be a strong woman means that you need to figure things out by yourself. That from childhood, you are always the one who is on top of everything. And because of this, people neglected to ask how you were really doing, pushing you further into silent suffering. Or even now, you are the mother and or the wife who has been known to always give whenever anyone else is in need, yet you induced yourself into martyrdom, believing that the more that you sacrificed, the better of a wife or the better of a mother it would have made you, not realizing that while you were busy giving to everyone else, you were losing pieces of yourself. You see, you have been silent for too long. You have suffered alone for too long and you have embraced a martyrdom that wasn't even ordained by God. And now is the time for you to make your needs known because God created each of us to have needs and wants. And God placed us within communities such as families, friend groups, churches that were meant to support us. So while you've been so busy catering and caring for everyone else, when was the last time you allowed for others to care for you? When was the last time you allowed for those around you to support you, to do something nice for you? You see, for some of you, you probably can't even recall when you've ever allowed for yourself to be helped because for so long you have carried the idea that you were always meant to be strong.
That if no one else was strong, the daughter had to be strong. That if no one else was strong, that the wife had to be strong. That if no one else was strong, that the mother had to be strong. That if no one else was strong, that the friend had to be strong. But no one is always strong, not even a black woman. And that is okay because God understands that we will have needs and we will have wants. And God is willing and wanting to provide for you, but you have to be willing to advocate for yourself and to speak up on your behalf. Because in advocating for yourself, you open yourself to receive the help that God would give to you through someone else. And we must be willing to speak up on our behalves. Because not only must be we not only must we be willing to speak up concerning our needs, but we must be willing to speak up when be, we are being mistreated, when we are being treated unjustly, or when we are being treated less than equal. You see, we were given voices and we were given minds to advocate for the better treatment of ourselves and for those around us. That it is biblical to advocate for yourself and to use your voice as Zelophehad's daughters did. Because in using your voice, you help to hold others accountable for how they are to treat you. I just need to say that again for somebody, that when you use your voice, you are helping to hold others accountable for how they treat you, meaning that you will not allow for people to talk to you any kind of way, that you will not allow for people to treat you any kind of way, and that you will not allow for just any and everybody to occupy your space, that when you use your voice, you are helping others to hold themselves accountable for how they treat you. And we find that Zelophehad's daughters were not alone in advocating for themselves because the very God who gave them the voice to use was the very God in verse seven who said, what Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. And you must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and give their father's inheritance to them. And I just need to stop right here for the person who has been feeling as though you've been speaking up and you feel as though you've been doing this whole thing alone. You see, I need you to know right now that for every moment that you decided to speak up concerning the unjust treatment you received, even though others may have called you all kinds of names and tried to slander you, I need you to know that you serve a God who will not only take up your case, but you serve a God who will vindicate your case. That although you may have spoken up on how you would like to be treated and you feel as though it has been falling on deaf ears, that the God that you serve not only hears you, but God at this moment is moving things around to work for you. That where someone wouldn't listen, someone else will. And I declare over you that even now, God is orchestrating for you to come into connection with those people who will let you know that you are heard, that you are seen and baby you are loved for although people may have allowed you to slip through the cracks and to make you believe that your voice has been ignored I need you to know that where humanity may fail God can still prevail that where humanity may deem it the end for you that God can still create new beginnings for you that where humanity may cast you on out that God can still call you back in and I need you to know that the God that you serve is one one who will not only speak on behalf of you, but that the God you serve is one who will also vindicate you. That where others thought you were crazy, that God will show that you were sane. That where others thought you were doing too much, that God will reveal that they weren't doing enough. I need somebody to receive this word that even if others will let you slip through the cracks, that God never will. That just as Job said in Job 13 verses 18, 
Behold, now I have prepared my case. I know that I will be vindicated and I need someone to say that I am vindicated because I am advocated for that. Not only am I called to advocate for myself, but that God is advocating for me because God would never call you to do something that God would not do God's self. And I need to say it one more time for the person in the back that I am vindicated because I am advocated for. And I need you to know that even if no one else cares about you, that God still cares about you. That even if no one else hears you, that God still hears you. And even if nobody likes you, that God still loves you. And because God loves you, God will always have your back. That where you thought you were alone, may you find that you've got someone there who has never left. That you've got a forever friend who is is there from the beginning to the end that you've got the lily of the valley who will be with you in the dumps and who will be with you at the top that you serve the God who is omnipotent and omnipresent that God can be wherever you need him to be and he will show up as whoever you need him to be that when you thought you were alone may you be encouraged today that you are not in this alone that though you may have had to advocate and speak up for yourself May you know that God has been speaking up for you in rooms where you never could have imagined your name is being spoken. And I need you to get this, that God is not asking you to advocate for yourself all alone, but God is calling you to advocate together. Because when you use your voice, you hold others accountable for how they are to treat you. And as I prepare to close, I'd like to make this final point that this story of Zelophehad's daughters make. And it is that when you use your voice, you not only hold others accountable for how they treat you, you also are holding others accountable for how they will treat those who will come after you. Because to advocate for yourself not only improves your circumstance, it also helps to improve the circumstance of others who will have similar, if not the same circumstances like you. For we find in verses 8 through 11, it says, Say to the Israelites, this is God talking, if a man dies and leaves no son, give his inheritance to his daughter. And I need you to get this. God didn't just say only give this inheritance to the daughters of Zelophehad. God is saying that from this day on out. That if there is any daughter of whom has no father and has no brothers, give her the inheritance. For we see in verse nine, it says, if he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. And if he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan that he may possess it. And this is to have the force of the law for the Israelites as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, you see, by advocating for the fair treatment of their needs, Zelophehad's daughters paved the way for the just treatment of those with similar situations to come after them. That Zelophehad's daughters paved the way for other daughters left fatherless and brotherless to be financially secure. And I need y'all to get this before I go, that because the daughters of Zelophehad decided to speak up for themselves, they indirectly spoke up for the other women who would be like them in years to come. That those other women wouldn't even have to go and advocate for themselves. They would already be in a position to receive what they needed because there was someone who went before them to pave the way. And you see, this could only happen because for such a time as then, the daughters of Zelopha had decided to speak up and use their voice. And today, for such a time as this, this, God is calling you to use your voice for yourself and to use your voice on behalf of those to come after you. Because we can sit here and we can hope for our children, for our nieces, our nephews, for our students, for, for any children that we've ever seen. We can hope that they could be that they will be treated better than we currently are being treated. 
But my question is, how can this happen if we ourselves do not advocate on behalf of ourselves right now? For if we are willing to advocate for ourselves, we show those younger than us how to do it for themselves too. That it is by example that others are able to follow. So it is only possible for those who are younger than Zelophehad's daughters to go and ask for the inheritance because they saw Zelophehad's daughters do it first. And even so today, God is asking for someone listening right now. Would you begin to speak up on behalf of yourself? Would you begin to use your voice? Would you begin to let everyone know what is on your heart? Would you begin to speak out on the behalf of those who are oppressed, vulnerable, and destitute? Would you begin to speak out loud for such a time as this? Because if you can do it, then the people who are looking up to you surely can do it after you. That people are waiting on you to speak up. And you see, by doing this, we show others that their voice matters. That not only are we telling them that their voice matters, but that we are showing them that their voice matters. That we are showing others that they too can be heard. And we are showing others that a change can be made. But more than ever, it starts with speaking up and using the voice that God has given you. And I want you to just take a second to think about this. What if Sojourner Truth never spoke up? Who would have continued to lead in the fight for abolitionism? What if Angela Davis never spoke up? She probably still would have been in a jail cell, jail cell, and she would have been incorrectly judged and proclaimed as guilty for a crime she never committed. And what if Ellen White decided to stay silent would we have had all of the literature that has helped to draw people closer to God and has even caused for people to see the true character of God? What if people like Serena Williams never spoke up even when doctors ignored her request to help her even though she felt that she was having blood clots after she had given birth to her daughter? What if she never spoke up? Would other black women have felt as comfortable to come forward and to begin advocating for themselves in the healthcare system? What if Justice Ruth Ginsburg never spoke up? Would women in this country be as far along as they currently are if she hadn't spoke up on our behalf? And as you continue to think of other women who have spoken up, what if they never spoke up? Would we be where we are today? Because you see, it is by these women being so courageous, it is by these women believing so deeply in the equal treatment of all, including themselves, that they were willing and able to go before those who could have shot them down to advocate on behalf of themselves. Because by advocating on behalf of themselves, they set it up for other women like you and I to be able to do the same for the women who will follow after us that it took one to lead the way in order for us to follow the way. And now today, I simply just want to ask you, are you willing to speak up? Are you willing to use the voice that God has given you? Are you willing to use the mind that God has given you? Because now more than ever, God is not calling for God's people to be silent. God is calling for God's people to be loud and heard. That we should be the first people who cry out when injustice has been done against minority groups, against gender groups, against religious organizations, against those who identify as very sexual orientations. We should be the first ones. That when different classes are being oppressed, such as the poor, that we would be the first ones to say that this is not right. And not only would be, we be the first ones to say that this is wrong, but we would be the first ones to make it right. That if you know that there are women and children and fathers in need of food, instead of waiting for someone else to go and do it, would you not only use your voice, but would you use your hands to go and give them food? That if you know that there are people who are currently being oppressed, 
Would you go and speak up declaring that this is not fair? And would you go and pave a way for them to get out of that situation? That would you not only be the mouth of Jesus Christ, but would you allow yourself by the spirit to be used as the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ? Because now more than ever, we do not not, not just need people who are speaking. We need people who are doing. Because for such a time as this, God is calling you to step up to the plate where others have stepped back. That for such a time as this, God is calling for you to speak truth where others are speaking lies. That for such a time as this, God is calling for you to care about humanity, even though people want to pick and choose who matters. That for such a time as this, God is saying, use your voice and speak up. And now whether that looks like using your voice to go on marches, do it. If it looks like protesting, do it. If it looks like using your social media outlets, do it. If it means using your voice by voting in this upcoming election, do it. Because whatever you do, God is asking, do not remain silent. Because for such a time as this, we need your voice. God is wanting to use your voice. And even now, if you're saying that I'm tired of staying quiet, that I want to use my voice for such a time as this, I want to speak out on the behalf of those who are not being heard, that I want to speak out on behalf of myself because for too long I have not been heard. That if you are saying that this is you today, would you simply type down in the comments saying, I'm going to keep speaking up. I'm going to keep speaking up. Because now more than ever, we need your voice. And if you've been one of those people who you've been speaking up for, for so long and you're saying you're tired, I want to encourage you today that your voice, though you may not have seen the fruit of your labor, someone has been empowered because you chose to speak up. Now, even if you can't see it, may you believe it today because we are people who move by faith. So even if you cannot see it, may you believe it that someone has been empowered because of you speaking up. And even today, if that is you, I want you to type down in the chat and say, I too am going to keep speaking up. Because now more than ever, the earth needs to hear of a people who will cry out for the oppressed. That now more than ever, that the earth is needing a people who will cry out for the vulnerable. That now more than ever, the earth is needing a people who will seek the change that can only be offered by those who are willing to demonstrate the love of God to those who are in need. Now more than ever, for such a time as this, God is asking, will you speak up? Because now we do not need your silence. We do not need your indifference. Now what the world needs is for a generation to rise up saying that I care, that God cares, that we care. And because we do care, that we will fight for you as long as it takes, that we will speak on your behalf for as long as it takes. But not only that, God is calling up a people who will do this for themselves. Because if you can do this for you, then how much more could you go and do it for the one crying out? And even so, God is saying, for such a time as this, your voice matters. And may you never go silent. Let us pray. Oh, dear God, dear God, even now as we come before you, Lord, we bless your holy name. And we say thank you that you are a God who no matter the class, no matter the gender, no matter the race, no matter who we are, that you still deeply care and love us. That you would take the time to hear from your heavenly throne and that you would intervene on behalf of us, God, that we would be cared for, that we would be provided for, that we would be protected, that we would be encouraged, that we would be empowered, that we would be comforted. God, you have heard us. And even now, Lord, I am asking that you would continue to use us to speak up.
that you would use us, God, to continue to speak up on behalf of ourselves and that you would use us to speak up on behalf of those within our society who are of the oppressed, who are of the destitute. We are asking that you, oh God, would continue to move and stir within us the courage to be able to speak, that you would move within us and that you would help us to have the boldness to speak, that you would move within us, oh God, that we would become so uncomfortable with being silent, God, that we would keep speaking. Because now more than ever, you have not called just a few to speak. You are calling all of your people to speak. So even now, would you empower us for such a time as this? Would you encourage us for such a time as this? And would you use us effectively for such a time as this? That you would bring us to those who would need to see your love. That you would align us with those who need to hear of your care. And that you would use us to bless those who need to see your love. Even now, Lord, we humble ourselves and ask for your help. We humble ourselves and we ask for your spirit because we know that by flesh that this is a hard thing to do, but by your spirit, it can be done. So even now, Lord, help us to speak up because God, we are needing to be heard and others are needing to be spoken for. So even now, God, we say thank you. We bless your name in advance and we thank you for stirring within us that you are calling us to speak and you are calling us to do. We accept this invitation today and we thank you for your spirit who will help us to continue to do it from this day forth. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. We want to thank our speaker for today for Women's Day, Pastor Janelle Monroe, for that beautiful and encouraging message. We hope that your hearts were blessed today. Let us pray. For in such a time as this, Lord, thank you for your goodness and generosity in giving us all that we need. Help us to praise you, O oh God, in every circumstance of life, in the good times and bad. Help us to trust you in love and faithfulness with all that we have and all that we are. In such a time as this, help us to serve you as we speak or write or listen to those nearby and far away. Help us to share your love in our plans at work and for others around us. In such a time as this, help us to continue to glorify you in every thought and word and deed by the power of your Holy Spirit. May our hearts be lifted to you continuously in such a time as this. Amen.